Hey, hey, y'all. Oh, I don't like this camera. I got them. I'm got <sighs> Good evening, Kay. Thank you for joining me over here oh, on YouTube. My bad. I, I thought somebody. Now we can't have right. all that loudness going on in the live now. Hey, everybody. I'm going to give people a few minutes okay, to come into the live. Oh! Babe. Can't be that loud. <laughs> hey, hey, everybody. Thank you for joining in the live. Go ahead and hit the thumbs up for your girl. Go ahead and drop the green heart emojis on your way in. Let me know where you joining from. Hey. Hey, Desire. Can y'all hear me tonight? Let me know if y'all can hear me tonight because I got my setup a little more official tonight. Like I got a real, I got notes. I'm, I'm ready. Let me know if y'all can hear me tonight. Hey, everybody. Hey, Lawanda. Hey, Amaya. K. Cameo Life. Desire. Alonzo. Look at y'all. Look at y'all in my live. I appreciate it. Hey, everybody, go ahead and drop them green hearts. <clears throat> and Babe Gay said to go ahead and do a flash sale. So, I don't know. I might leave it up to y'all. What do y'all want me to have a sale on? Y'all know I'm getting ready for my Black Friday sale this, this coming up week. We calling it Green Friday over there at Army Princess Collection. So... I might do like a quick flash sale during the live and drop a couple things down, put them on sale for y'all. Let me turn this around. I do not like this camera. I got my green screen up because I did some recordings a while ago. My lashes got me looking like I got a lazy eye. All right, so I got a, I got, I got a real, a real live for y'all tonight. Um. Let me go ahead and get started. Hey, everybody. Thank you all for watching me in this live. I'm Army Princess, a U.S. Army soldier. I've been in the military for over 10 years now, and I love to share my experiences with you all to help you all become the best soldiers you can be. With that being said, I want to talk a little bit about ACFT prep. So I've been getting a lot of questions about ACFT prep, um, how to prepare for ACFT. There's been a lot of changes that has been happening with the ACFT, hold on y'all, hold on. A lot of changes that have been happening with the ACFT and the information that has been, been being put out for the ACFT. And I wanted to come on and talk a little bit about the ACFT. I have a few letters here for y'all. I got basic training mail that I'm gonna read. And actually in this, in this, um, in these basic training letters, I have two different people that wrote to me and they talk a lot about the ACFT, give you all tips on how to prepare for the ACFT, what you should do before you even leave, before you even leave for um, basic training. So that's why I decided to talk a little bit about ACFT tonight. I'm trying to fix my camera. Maybe I need to fix my chair. So like we're going to do like how we normally do in a live. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the, the things that I want to talk about, some of the topics here. Make sure y'all go ahead and drop them green hearts. Um, let me know where y'all coming in from for the new people that's just now joining. And if you have any questions, um, you will be able to get your questions answered. So this is going to be a little more structured live for y'all tonight. And I'm going to try to do this a few times a week. Oh, really quick announcement. I will have a live this upcoming. I'm going to have a live probably Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. But the live on Saturday is going to be one that y'all don't want to miss because I'm going to have my panel back like I normally do. And I got some heavy hitters that are going to be a part of the panel. This Saturday is going to be a military small business live. So I'm going to bring a lot of military um people on and talk about how they balance oh, military yeah. and having a business. So I had a few questions last night about, you know, having a business in the military and things of that nature. So I'm going to bring a few military people on to talk to you all about businesses in the military. Um, but getting back to tonight's live, this is ACFT prep and how to prevent injuries. So a lot of people have been going to basic training and getting injured. Myself included. When I went away to basic training many, many years ago, I got hurt um, in basic training. And I don't want it to happen to you all. 
now with the ACFT and the removal of the APFT, I feel like it, it is easier for you to get hurt. There are a lot of movements that have to happen. There is a lot of moving pieces with this new ACFT. And for many people that are joining the military, you're not really prepared to um, to do a lot of the stuff. Like you you haven't been training for it. My, like when I joined the military and when I came in, I was not active at all as far as anything physical. I was like a cheerleader like every now and again because it was cute. But I didn't really do any physical stuff. I wasn't like track and field. I didn't do wrestling. I didn't do swimming. I didn't do anything that was very physical. So when I joined the military and went to, went away to basic training, I literally got hurt within the first four weeks of me being there. And I had to go to what is what was called, at that time it was called warrior rehab. I do believe they have a version of it today, but it's somewhere where you go and you kind of rest and get better. And then you continue on in your training. But the bad part about getting hurt in basic training is when she, once you stop your training and you um, have to do your rest period so that you can recover and get better, when you get better, you have to start back over from the beginning. So four weeks into basic training, I had to start back from the beginning. And you start like with a whole new group of people because the people that you originally started with, they continue on their training. So four weeks later, they was almost like, you know, over halfway done with their basic training. So I had to start from scratch from day zero and do everything again. You don't want to have to do everything again. So I'm going to talk to you all about tips on how to prevent those injuries so that it doesn't happen to you. So number one, my number one tip that I have is start now. I get this question all of the time in my DMs. When should I start preparing for basic training? Should I just wait when I get there? Will they train me up when I get there? Or are there things that I should be doing now? My question to that answer is start now. Start today. I don't care if you're going to basic training next year. Start now because it's not going to do anything but help you in the long run. Um, start now. Start getting your body in the rhythm of physical training, doing physical things, getting active, up and moving, doing some of the movements like the deadlift, the leg tug, the sprint drag carry. Just get your body into the movements of doing those things so that way it becomes normal. It becomes routine and it will lessen the chance for you to, to have any in injuries moving forward. Desire asks, what is the APFT? The APFT is the old PT test. So back at the beginning of this year, I think October, October, the APFT went away. So what the Army has been doing for the last, I don't know how long, like years, like 40 years was the APFT. That is the two minutes of push-ups, the two minutes of sit-ups, and the two-mile run. That was called the APFT, the Army Physical Fitness Test. That is gone. No more. Now we have the ACFT, the Army Combat Physical Fitness Test. Um, so that is what the APFT was. But I said, I talked about starting now. Um, proper form. That that right there is it, it's going to save you from everything. Like it, it, whether you start today or you start a day before you go, if you are doing the form wrong, if you're doing the exercises wrong, you're going to get hurt regardless. So when you're doing these exercises, I know a lot of them may be new for you. You've never seen them before. You never do done them before. Google them when you get to basic training and you're actually doing it in basic training. Watch the drill sergeants. The drill sergeants are there to help you perform the exercises correctly to the standards so that you don't get hurt. They don't want you to get hurt. They don't want you to recycle. They want you to make it to graduation day. That's what they're there for. They're going to be walking around. They're going to be looking at every movement that you do to make sure your form is done correctly to standard so that you don't get hurt. Because if you get hurt and you go home, it's literally a waste of money for the military. I see all these people signing up. Thank you all for going to the website and signing up. I have like three people that done sign up in a website. I get a notification every time y'all sign up and um, get the 15% off. So thank you all for signing up over there. But we talked about starting now. We talked about proper form. The next thing that I want to talk about is practice. So practice makes perfect. Like I said, start now. Get your body used to it. Build up, you know, build up to it. And then it's going to be like second nature for your body. It will lessen the chance of you getting hurt if you start now and if you practice. Um, you may not be able to do 10. I think my minimum for the 
um, push-up event is 10 push-ups. But they're a different type of push-up, y'all. It's not the regular, like, push-up. No. They are the, they call them the T push-up or the hand release push-up. So, literally, you, this, this is, for example, if this was the wall or the floor. I'm pushing. I go down. I come back up. I'm laying on my chest. Literally, I'm laying on my chest. And I have to extend my arms out to the side like this. I don't know if y'all can see me. I extend my arms out, like up off the up off the ground. Imagine like this. I'm extending my arms up, and then I bring them back in, and then I do another push up. That's one. So this is me laying on the ground. I push up. I come back down. I'm laying on on my chest. I extend my arms out. I come back. One. Push up. Come back down. Put my arms out. Two. Like, it's those type of push-ups. This is not, not your regular, like this, where you could just sit up and crank them out. Like, it's a lot that goes into it. And if your body is not used to that, you'll have shoulder injuries. You'll have wrist injuries. Um, so practice, 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 practice. Start with one. Like, people be like, oh, I can't do a push-up. Just do one and do that one correctly. Don't move to two unless you get number one correct. Like, proper form all the way down. All the way up, come out, release your arms, and bring them back and do another one. One. It's not a game, y'all. <laughs> Kay said, I'm so nervous about those leg tugs. Girl, girl, baby, girl, them leg tugs get everybody. And I, and I have, in this letter, she talked about leg tugs, so we're going to get into that in a minute. Um, Is the ACFT worse than the APFT? Mm. Yeah, bring me some lip gloss over here. Thank you. Um, yes, I would say yes. The ACFT is, is more physically demanding than the APFT. The APFT was a piece of cake and people couldn't pass that. So y'all really gonna have to work for this APFT, this ACFT. So my fourth uh, tip for ACFT prep is to ease into it, to build up to it. Like I said, start with one. Don't move to two unless you got one done properly proper form and everything. Once you are able to do one, two properly. Oh, look, he brought over the lip gloss. Let me pause for the cause real quick and show y'all some of these lip glosses. So this one is one of my new ones. It looks, this is, this is, it's military ball. So this is like a red wine color, military ball. It has the mirror on it. I also have soldier of the month which is my glittery color, G.I. Jane, pink nude, mirror on the back, and then brass and ammo. This one isn't on the site yet, but these squeeze tubes, y'all, these squeeze tubes are going to be new on the site. So these will be available Black Friday, Green Friday. But these ones are are currently on sale now. So if y'all want to head over to the site, I'm doing a flash sale for this live. But let me get back into it. So we need to ease into it. Y'all go ahead real quick. Go ahead, drop some green hearts. Go ahead and share this video because we need more people to be in this live. So if you have any type of social media, please go ahead and share this video on your social media so we can get more people in this live. Um, and hit the like button for your girl. Go ahead and hit the like button. Let me put my website up because I got a few people asking about it. Oh, this is my IG. Go ahead and follow me on IG, y'all, too. I, I literally post all day long in IG, in my story, all day long. So if you want to see me more, if you have questions for me, I put question stickers up. Go ahead and follow me on IG. I'm almost at 1,000 followers on IG, and I literally just started the IG page in September for the launch of the Army Princess Collection. So it's my business IG, Army Princess Collection. Please go ahead and follow me over there. I'm almost at 1,000 people. My goal is to hit 1,000 by December 1st, and I think I'm going to make it. Okay. Build into it. That's what I was talking about. Build into it. Don't try to do it all in one day. Hey, Kathleen Samuels. Hello. This is my 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 biggest supporter, y'all. One of my biggest supporters. <laughs> Bed check went quick tonight. <laughs> Thank you for joining the live. Thank y'all for dropping those green hearts. It's Cammy. Hey. Okay. Bill, I've been talking about this tip for the longest. Build up, build into it. Um, 
grown wasn't built in a day. You're not going to be able to, if you coming off the street and you haven't done anything physical, I'm not going to say everybody because some people can, but you may not be able to do the whole PT test in one whack straight off the rip. Like you have to build up to it and you don't want to get hurt. So you need to start slow. Start at one. Your goal, maybe in a two week period, your goal is to get like maybe five in two weeks. Get them five down. Like get them five good. Them five, them hand release push ups. Then you can build up. When you do it slow like that, it helps your body recognize what's going on. So your body is not put into shock. Oh. And then you will lessen or prevent injuries. So, excuse me, build up to it. So I want to talk a little bit about these letters. I want to go ahead and read this letter. This letter is from one of my subscribers. I, I believe it's a female. Um, and for Jackson. And she wrote this in October. So I'm going to go ahead. Hey, Fruit Speaks. I'm going to go ahead and read this because it's a lot of good information in here for y'all. Hey, Army Princess. I'm one of your YouTube followers and a fan. I'm currently at Basic Training at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. I just really wanted to say thank you for the videos and advice. My platoon is currently in week four of training and get ready for phase, get ready to phase from red to white. I would like to stress if you could for your YouTubers to follow to really think about why they want to join before they even join um, and go to basic training. So that's one thing that she said she wanted to stress is really understand why you want to do it. Because it's mm -hmm. going to be mentally challenging for you. Um, also, the importance of running a lot. <laughs> she put a lot in capital letters. Prior to coming and if available, practicing getting on a pull-up bar prior to coming for the leg tuck. For the new ACFT, a lot of us here are struggling hard, and that's why. According to the drill sergeants, it's a combination of alternating straight arm pull-ups and actually throwing yourself back like a backflip. The really hard part about basic training is really prepping for it and working out, dieting correctly, and having the right attitude. Most come in with their own agenda and not with an open sponge hunger. Some don't really think about how basic training really is and ready to work as a team. Yellow face has been the most mentally challenging simply because um, all you do is bay maintenance, work out, and have a few sit-down classes. COVID has changed a few things, but overall, it's not as bad as people think it is. Oh. Self-PT, we didn't have self-PT when I went in. Self-PT is something everyone should be down for, doing Self-PT is something everyone should be doing in reception in the base. We're getting ready for the range. Hope this information helps. And may you have a great rest of your day. So I thought this, I wanted to say this because this, she talking to y'all. Like this is this right here. She talking to y'all and telling y'all, you know, dropping little gems and jewels for y'all that's about to go to basic training. My other letter is from my one of my my big oh, YouTube right. subscribers, followers. She's been following me forever. Her name is Elady. And I haven't I wrote back to her several times. I haven't heard from her in a while. I know she got hurt in basic training. So Elady, if you're watching, I hope you are okay. I hope you made it through cuz last time we talked, she was kind of trying to figure out if they were going to keep her there or send her home. But this is a, like one of the last letters I got from her. And she says, um, as I wait to know if I'm going to continue training or not, I have been going to rehab and strength training in the gym on Mondays and Fridays. So this is kind of like what I was talking about when I got hurt. It was called Warrior Rehab, where we rest. We kind of did physical therapy. We did strength training. We were able to, you know, get our, our bodies back into shape. I had um, tendonitis, tendonitis in both of my ankles. When I went through basic training. So what that means is like my ankles swole up like this and I could barely walk like tendons swole up because my body wasn't used to any physical activity. I feel like there is so much more that I can do and it would be unfair to me if I, I got chaptered out when I am physically able to perform better than a lot of the trainees. And she actually DM me a lot before she left. And she was showing me her workout. She would be in a gym, like actually lifting the, the barbell weights, the deadlift weights, like really practicing and getting ready for basic training before she went. And she still got hurt. So that's why I really wanted to do this live for y'all and just kind of like talk about the importance of starting early, 
building your body up, preparing, doing proper form. Like, don't go there and shock your body because you're going to get hurt, especially with this new PT test. You're going to get hurt. Start now. Um, Let me see, because I had a few questions. I'm going to answer a few questions. And then I'm going to go, go back in and talk about some of the things that I want to talk about. So Kay said, I'm nervous about the leg tuck. Girl, me too. I still can't get one. What are the main things I should focus on for the ASVAB? I'm going to save ASVAB for a whole nother, a whole nother video. I am doing my 25 days of Christmas, so I will include ASVAB in there. I have a whole video on ASVAB, so please go watch my things I wish I would have known before I joined the military playlist, and I talk about the ASVAB. Um, I'm terrified of the leg tucks too, though I had it went to the park the other day and it was a no-go yes go to the park get on a pull-up bar i don't care if it's the 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 monkey bars at the playground get on it so you can practice practice now k says i leave in january for basic i'm trying girl go keep keep pushing girl keep doing it even if you get to like almost able to do one that's going to help you and the biggest thing with the leg tuck is your core you need to be doing planks you need to be working on your core, strengthening your core, doing sit-ups, crunches, whatever you can do. I would say planks and extras. Look at, look on Google. Look for exercises to strengthen your core and strengthen your, your lat muscles because that will really help you be able to pull your body up and then get your knees up to your elbows to do a complete pull-up. But a lot of it is grip strength too. So you're literally hanging on the bar and you're holding your whatever your body weight is. So I weigh... 145 pounds so my hands are not used to holding 145 pounds and then pulling my knees up to my my elbows so even if you get on the bar and just hang on the bar hang as long as you can just hang on that bar because that will help your grip strength in your hands and help you be able to hold on to the bar um the sun the run screws me every time i hate running i love running y'all Funny story. When I first joined the military, I, I like I said, I wasn't fit of physical. I hated running. I hated it with a passion. I hated running. I was not a good runner. Some of my the sergeants that was at my um, you know, at my unit, males, they ran with me and they taught me how to run. So running is an art. Running is something that is learned. People don't talk about it. People don't discuss it enough, but you like if you see those athletes, you see those people out there running, they don't they not just like get up one day and go out there and run. Like you have to train to run and teach yourself how to run. There's techniques to running, to breathing, to um foot placement, to to I forgot, stride, to get your stride, like to lengthen your stride. So it's a lot that goes into running. I do have a whole video on tips to improve your run, how to run. And like how to start running from somebody who is not a runner to build up to being able to pass the A P F T A C F T the two mile run. So please go back and watch those videos. I think I have like a fitness playlist or get fit with me or whatever playlist. And I talk a lot about running because running is my passion. Y'all know if y'all OG followers, y'all know I did the Army 10 miler last year. I did a half marathon like two years before that. So I love running. It's just techniques to running. Is you can't just get up one day and just go out there and run two miles if you're not a runner. Build up to it. I, like I said, my last tip, build up to it. Start slow and build up to it. Um, Desire dropping green hearts. Kaylin dropping green hearts. At least you have an advantage, advantage to learning. I joined in 2016. You'll be fine, Kay. Yes. Facts right there. Kiana said, at least you got an advantage to learn. Like, we just got it thrown on us. Like, this... <laughs> This finna change. <laughs> Forget what you've been doing for the last 10 years. We finna do something new. Um, I thought of I thought we could wear couldn't wear lip gloss and basic training because the female drill sergeant has something to say. So I have the basic, the clear lip gloss. Depending on your oh. it is true, depending on where you go, um, Every literally every basic training place is different, every company is different. One company might allow something, the next company might say no. Um, so I would say buy it and wear it like in AIT is a little more relaxed. Um, or after you get out, but 
and basic training, it, it's, it's very wishy-washy. It's no guarantee because, like I said, it just depends on the drill sergeant. It depends on that company. It depends on that location. It's, it's no rhyme or reason to it. That's the same with the phone calls. Every place is different. It, there's no, no standard to it. So, um, Green Hearts coming in here. Everybody dropping Green Hearts. What is the longest distance that you ran in basic training? Ooh, girl. The longest distance that I, I really can't can't tell you because they were running us into the ground. Literally. Like we would get done with dinner in the evening. Okay, we about to go for a run. And I mean we we didn't have like watches at that time, like um like Apple watches and stuff that tell you how long you've been running. So and I didn't know the base. So we just ran. I would say at least two to three miles, like so there is a regimen for working out in basic training. And I know that they do like ability group runs and long distance runs. So you may run like three to four or five miles, depending. <laughs> so it, it they're going to run you. They're going to run you. Um, yes, yeah, she did the Army 10 Miler. Yes, I did the Army 10 Miler last year, the same year that I had my son. Within nine months of having him, I ran the Army 10 Miler. And I literally trained for that summer so it wasn't like I, I waited nine months and then i ran like i started running i literally started running when i was done with my um what is it like the the 12 weeks that you not supposed to work out or do nothing i started running after that um i want to do that marathon goes go ahead on girl you can do it when you retire from the military with the military help you find civilian world careers so that Wow, that's a good question. Will the military help you find careers? No, they. I mean, it's up to you. Like some people get out and literally do nothing. Like nobody's gonna make you do anything. They're not gonna help you. It's up to you. You need to put yourself in a predicament to set yourself up for success in the future when you get out of the military. I always tell people when you join the military military make sure you pick a job that's going to be a stepping stone to set you up for success in the future if you want to be a doctor then you need to come in and pick a nursing job or some kind of medical job a medic job or something that's going to build you up it's no sense in me working admin and my long-term goal is to be a doctor i guess it, it don't connect you need to set yourself up for success stepping stone really quickly before I go in to answer more questions, let me get back into this ACFT prep because I really don't want y'all to get hurt in basic training. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about what I think about this new ACFT. Because like I said, I've been in doing, doing the military thing for a long time now. Let me sip my margarita. For a long time now. And I gotta get my mind right, y'all, for this new this new PT test. Like, I don't like change. I've been saying that I don't like change, but I, I have no choice. Like Uncle Sam said, this is what you're gonna do come one October. I really, I really didn't mind the old PT test. A lot of people didn't like it. A lot of people had trouble passing the old PT test. I maxed my push-ups. I maxed my sit-ups. I never maxed the run, but I came doggone close to maxing that run. I think my fastest run time, my fastest, one of my fastest run time was straight out of basic training. When you come out of basic training, you run your fastest because your body is just used to running, running, running. But my second fastest run time was like a 1630. I think I ran a 1630. And for my age, I have like 21 minutes <laughs> to run it. And I ran it in like 16 minutes and 30 seconds. My two miles. So I didn't have trouble with the APFT. Now this ACFT, I've taken it a few times. So I can say that I have taken it. <laughs> she drink margaritas every night. I like tequila. Okay. Don't judge me. Don't do me. <laughs> I ain't got to go to work tomorrow. So that's why I'm drinking this. This. Um, this tequila. Don't do me, cameo life. Don't, don't do me. <laughs> that just took me out. <laughs> Let me get back to what I'm talking about. Okay, so <laughs> I see what 
to doing that. Um, the ACFT, I've taken it a few times, and I, I don't like it, but it's not bad, if that makes sense. Like, I could have stayed with the OPT test and been like, do-do-do, I got to get my mom right for all of this stuff. There are six events in the ACFT. One is the three rep max deadlift. For my minimum, I have to lift 140 pounds three times. Um, the sprint drag carry, the leg tuck, the hand release push up, the ball throw. I forgot the official name, but like the ball throw and then the two mile run. That's the six events. Um, I don't like it. It's just a lot going on. That sprint drag carry will wear your legs out. But I passed. <laughs> I passed both times. One time it was, I took it last December. It was freezing. But I passed. So it, it's, it, it's easy. I would say it's easy to pass compared to the PT test. But it's harder to match if that makes any sense. So it's harder to like get a very, very high score, but it's easy to pass. Um, But it's doable. Like y'all can do it, especially y'all new people, which are good Meganese. Like y'all could do it. It's just, um, it's just a lot going on and I'm not really, I, I really have to get my mom right for it. <laughs> I do have a whole video up on how to prepare for it. So if anybody has any questions on how to prepare for it, um, check out my video on my channel. It, it actually got a lot of views on it, but I talk about things that you can use at home to prepare for it. I do have a medicine ball. I do have, have a doorway pull up. Those type of things you can order on Amazon, even though they're probably like sky high right now because of um, COVID. People can't really go to the gym. But those are things that you need to get at home. Let me answer a few more questions. I'm 88 Mike. So I'm in the head. Oh, girl. Girl. She said she in the heavy category. So when it's time to, um, so my time went up because of my ACFT and my age. I came and took it and took, I came and took that time away. Yes. Yeah, so if you in the heavy category, my heart go out to you. I'm glad I'm in a light category, but that heavy category, baby girl. I don't even know. What is your minimum, Kiana? What's your minimum for the heavy category? Jamal says, hi. I think that's how you pronounce it. And you run everywhere to child, to formation, to the latrine, everywhere. Yes, that's true. That's why I said my my fastest time after I left out of basic training, um, I had my fastest run, run time because you literally run everywhere. Joshua said facts. Kathleen said, I feel you, Kiana, with the runtime going up and now ACFT changes that. Would JR JROTC help you in the military? Mm, I never took ROTC, so I really can't answer that question. But I hear it just kind of shows you the basic, maybe some of the facial movements, some of the rank and stuff like that. But other than that, that's the type of stuff you learn in basic training anyway. So but that's what I hear. I've never done JROTC. Well, I hope you don't make me throw the lip gloss away because I love lip gloss and I'll be mad. Usually they, they just have you put it to the side. Like So when you get to basic training, you the first thing you do is go to reception. Reception is um, getting text. Thank y'all for signing up for my website and signing up for my um, Instagram. I'm getting notifications. Um, so when you get to basic training, you're going to go to reception. And reception is where you kind of get. So this, I'm going to answer this question for Kay. Because Kay asked me a question about buying stuff. And this kind of ties into this. When you get to basic training, at least from what I, I know and from what I've been told, you know, that this is still going on. When you get to basic training, they will literally give you everything. You will literally get to buy everything. I'm not going to say they give you everything. You will get to buy everything you need. You do not have to go to basic training with anything. So Kay asked me this question, what should she bring or purchase during after basic training? When you get to basic training, they're going to tell you what you need to buy. 
they'll they'll like literally walk you to the store and they be like you need to get this you need to get this you need to get this so you really kind of don't have an option of like i'm not gonna buy that buy with the gym get uniforms you don't have to buy uniforms they'll give you uniforms you'll get tan t-shirts you have to wear the tan t-shirts under your uniform you'll get socks and stuff like that or i think you may have to buy socks we had to buy um underwear and bras there because they had to be like plain white it can't be victoria's secret and all of that so you're gonna buy all of that when you get there even your running shoes they're gonna tell you what running shoes to buy they're gonna give you money on your card to buy the stuff Buy all the stuff when you get there. Whatever they tell you you need when you get there, that's what you need. That's what you need to buy. You literally only need to come with a small toiletry bag and the clothes on your back. Um, she also asked about pictures. Nobody ever asked me about pictures, but I'm surprised I haven't talked about, about pictures because that's like right up my alley. So when you do get to basic training, I don't know. Somebody let me know in the comments that just recently passed because I can't remember. If you take your picture like at the beginning of basic training or towards the end of basic training, you do get a picture, you know, in full uniform. You have your hat on. You have your name on your chest. You looking, you standing proud and looking tall. You feel accomplished because you, you you joined the military and now you became something. But it's not a glam shot. Let me tell you that. <laughs> ain't going to be no makeup. You ain't going to have your hair done. It's literally like, like a line. And you all get in line. And it's like one after the other. You sit here, stand in front of the lights, pose. And take your picture and you keep going. Now at the that they at the end they have um we had like a yearbook type thing, like you get a yearbook and they take pictures throughout your basic training and they put them all together in a book and they have all this stuff that you can buy at the end. That's new. Cause they didn't have that when I went to basic training. We didn't get like they selling like t-shirts and hats and we didn't have all that. So I mean if you want to buy it, go ahead and buy it. But uh the things that they tell you to buy in basic training is the things that you need to get. So I don't, I really don't think that there's stuff that you will have to buy and you won't use because a lot of the stuff they just give you, you're issued it. The things that you have to buy is the things that you're going to need and you will use. Um, but the stuff that you bring, so answering, Cami, 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 I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. It's Cami's question about the lip gloss. When you get to reception and you have things that you are not supposed to have, like, you know, makeup and stuff like that, Victoria's Secret bras and stuff like that, they'll just have you put it in a bag and they'll hold it till you graduate. So a lot of the stuff you won't have to throw away if you give it up when they ask you, you know, when they confiscate everything in the beginning, then they'll just hold it for you. Jamal said, Jamal, yes, there was some ROT students and they enlisted at a higher rank, like E2. Okay. So there you go. Let me see what other questions that I have. Oh, y'all ask. Y'all got a lot of questions. Somebody said their runtime went up. If you are on active duty and you want a ba and you want a bachelor's degree, will it take more than four years or don't do active duty? So that's a very good question. And I'm going to write that down as one of the topics to talk about on my 25 days of Christmas, which is um, education, basically. So if you're on active duty and you want to go to school, it's probably more than likely, yes, going to take you more than four years. I say more than likely because it depends on your school. It depends on a lot of factors. But I want you to know that more than likely, probably not going to be able to, you won't be able to go to school full time. You have a full time, in the daytime at least, you have a full time job. Now, if you are able to function over 40 hours in a day and do 12 credits in nighttime, more power to you. But usually when people on active duty go to school, they take online classes and they take one or two classes because they have a full time job during the day. So it's hard to come home at nighttime and do 12 credit. So, you know what I mean? You take you go to work during the day and then you take whatever you can, one or two classes, like Tuesday, Thursday or something like that. You have lecture and maybe you have a Saturday um, 
lab or something like that, depending on your class. So because you take it slower, it's going to probably take you more than four years. So I hope that answers your question. I hope that's not confusing. But the answer to the question is, yes, it's probably going to take you more than four years. Um, the older you get, the less time you have to run. No, it's the opposite. The older you get, the more time you have to run. But now with this, that was with the old PT test. The older you get, the more time you get to run. But now, I think everybody get like 21 minutes. <laughs> Not the Meganese. Yes. You got these young folks got the Meganese so they can run. I see some green hearts. If you want active duty in Army and also want a bachelor's degree, will it take more than four years? Is that the same question? More than four years, you think it's better to go reserve a National Guard? Um, yeah, probably so. But reserve a National Guard is not the same experience, and I would never tell anybody to go reserve a National Guard unless you have specific reasons. Like you fall into a specific category. For for if anybody asks me about reserve a National Guard, what's the best choice? I'm gonna always say go active. Possible move guard to finish degree, then transfer to active. That's a possibility. It's not a guarantee. You take the picture at reception. Okay, so somebody said you take the picture at reception. I couldn't remember. I just remember taking a picture. It was not a cute picture because <laughs> you literally have no makeup. You have nothing like like your normal stuff that you would think to take a picture. Oh, the internet went out. My internet went out. I'm back. Back like I never left. So, um, so somebody said you, they answered the question, you take the picture in reception. Do they give you money? So, great question, Desire. Great question. So, Yes and no, <laughs> if that makes sense. So when you go, a lot of people, when they go to basic training, they have no money. They come with nothing in their pockets, which is fine. Yeah. What happens is they give you like a credit card and they pro, is that the word? Not pro rate. They give you an advance. So it's your money <laughs> that you're spending on your card. So Yes and no. That's why I say yes and no. They give you money, but it's your money. It's going to come out of your first paycheck. I think it has like $200 preloaded on it. It's not like you're going to go into PX in the shop at and ball out. It's like $200 preloaded on it, enough to give you, to, for you to buy the things you need. And it comes out of your first paycheck. <laughs> so no flash sale. Yes, we're doing a flash I sale. I don't care. Um, I meant more of the memorabilia things like photos and the DVDs from basic trainers. So, like I said, when I went through, we didn't have that. So I, I would say buy it. Like, it's your memories. So now when you go to these military schools, you do get um, DVDs and you get the memorabilia. You can buy, like, the, the cards. When I went through basic training, we didn't have that. All we had was, like, the one yearbook type thing. And you get your photo that you take in reception. If I had the option now and I'm going through, I would say definitely yes, get it. Like, if you're not the type of person that go back and watch it or you think it's going to be a waste of money, then don't. But, I mean, it's like $20. Like, you might as well get it. It's like a first one-time experience of basic training. Get it. I don't think it'll be a waste. I think it'll just be something that you'll be able to keep and look back on forever. Kiana says she in the heavy minimum debt. Girl. Two hundred? Two hold on. Hold on. I gotta catch my breath on that. Two hundred? Two hundred? And you gotta throw that ball to eight? Baby girl. I only had to throw it to four point five. Henry thirty Henry. Kiana, you playing. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. I didn't know it was that much. 80 on the ball throw. I can't, I can barely get to like 4.5. And I only have to do 10 push ups. You got to do 30. Girl, leg tug minimum is five. I'm going to pray, pray for you, Kiana. I wish you the best of luck. 
I'm in school, started off as active, but switched to reserve. I'm in school now, can't be active and go to grad for OT, okay. occupational therapist, because the clinical, so I'll go active after. Okay. So look at, see, she, if you got a plan, she got a plan. She got a down pack. That's what you need to do. Can you have two MOSs? That's a good question, Destiny P. Yeah. You, yes, you can. You can. I was going to say you talking to me. So you say you can have two MOSs. Yes. Primary and a primary and a secondary. I was going to say yes, but he answered it quickly. You can. Yes, it's an advance they give you that will come out of your first paycheck. As mm-hmm. what happens to my questions. As long as I get my Army Princess lip gloss, my pitch is going to be fine. Okay. Okay. We have an. Uh, did, did you put the stuff on a flash sale? No, y'all didn't decide what y'all wanted. Did y'all decide if y'all wanted to have a flash sale? Y'all let me know in the comments if we need to put, the, if we need to mark the stuff on sale, people go, go to the site. I had people go over there and sign up for their 15% off, but let me know if y'all want me to have a flash sale. I'm. 17 done with high school i went to college first had my degree and joined the army do you think it's worth it or you think it's better to go to military first um that's a really really good question i get that question all of the time and i would say go if you already like have everything ironed out go to school first my suggestion is go to school first get your degree girlfriend get your degree Come in as the officer and you will have a better quality of life. You'll have more pay. Um, Not necessarily that it's going to be easier, but you will get paid more to have the same hard knock life. So go get your degree, girl. Get your degree. Oop, dang, that sucks. What sucks, Desire? Yes, 200. Kathleen, you got to do 200. Oh, I'm going to pray for you too. She said she did 34 hand release push ups. That's awesome. I'm proud of you. $300. Okay, so you get 300. All right, y'all. So I talked about ACFT, ACFT prep. We have 47 minutes. I appreciate y'all in this live. Go ahead and make sure y'all hit the thumbs up. Let me see how many thumbs up. I have no thumbs up, y'all. I'm going to need for y'all to go ahead, go back and hit the thumbs up button, please, for your girl. Because um, I have no thumbs up and I have 17 people in here right, right now. We was up to 20 people. So if y'all like this live, um, let me know. I'm going to, what I am going to do is do the 25 days of Christmas. So that means I'm going to come on here and go live every single day for 25 days straight, starting December 1st. Um, And drop y'all comments, drop y'all, not y'all comments, y'all topics. I'm I'm asking for, for topics to talk about. It doesn't even necessarily have to be military related. Like it could be anything y'all want to talk about because we got 25 days straight. So I don't know. How much we could do for 25 days straight of ASBAB and PT tests? Like we need to, we need to, we need to expand our horizon. So whatever, if y'all want to talk about life, if y'all want to talk about what's going, DK for L. <laughs> I know everybody know what's going on. DK for L. Like, like whatever y'all want to talk about, let me know. I'm down. I'm gonna be on here for a few more minutes. If anybody have any questions. Okay, so she said she hit it earlier. I guess I don't know why it's not updating. It's still showing zero for me. Um, I went right in after high school so they could pay for college. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, she said it's 21. It's showing zero for me. Maybe it's just me and my lagging internet. But look at y'all holding me down. What's wash hands, <laughs> Eric? What does that mean? Like, do you want to talk about washing hands? Are you telling us? Wash our hands. What what does that mean? That you got to spend your own money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of works out though because you don't really miss it. That's the thing. Like you don't miss it. Like when you you a lot of people literally come with nothing. So you don't miss the little two hundred, three hundred dollars. It's at the end, like you literally Literally, your paycheck is just building up for when you graduate. So when you graduate, you see all the money in your account. You just like, let me ball out. But please don't. 
Don't buy a car. <laughs> don't waste it on dumb stuff. Um, most units don't want to spend send you back to AIT though unless it benefits them. Yes, that that's why I was kind of hesitant on as, as answering that question. You can you can get a dual MOS, but it's not a guarantee. Um, and it's a it's kind of a lot like it's not like it's easy. So it's possible. You can do it. Amaya said it's at 22 now. Thank y'all. Eric said I'm clapping. Did you wash your hands, Eric? Shante, thank you. You are, are in active duty. It's Cam Cam. How do you say it? Cammy, Came. Drop them green hearts. Thank you. Do you have tips on changing jobs? I want to change my MOS. I actually have a whole video up on my channel. Like, y'all go ahead and check out my playlist. I have so many videos in my playlist. I t like one of my last videos that I uploaded was talking about changing your MOS. It is possible, kind of falls in that dual MOS category. So go back and watch that video. In the house on the street. Um, hi, my name is Kaylin and I just turned 18. Right. I want to be a psychiatrist right. in the army. Can you please tell me the worst about basic training and why do so many people regret going guard? I that's a good question because I never really heard about a lot of people regretting going guard. I really have don't know a lot about regard regard about the reserves in the National Guard. Um I know that are some benefits to doing it. But in my opinion, I'm all straight active duty. Like straight active duty because I feel oh, like uh, and I know that going guard and reserve, you will not have the same experience because you're not doing it every single day. Like you, it's just not possible for you to have the same experience. Like you get up and you live and breathe army and you go to PT every day. You go to work every day. You go to formation every single day. Like it's different than you doing it and you going back home and you only doing it one week in a month. It's not the same experience. The people that you're doing it with one week in a month are like going through the motions. They're not doing it every day, so they're not as sharp on the regulations and how things are supposed to go and how things should be the standard. They just doing it once a month. So, um, there are some perks though. Don't let me, you know, sh shy you away from it. There are perks. There are some school options, and I said for people that have a fall into a very particular category I think is good for them. I don't think it's good for everybody. And I feel like if you have nothing to lose, if you're not married, if you don't have any kids, if you have nothing holding you back home, why not go active and go join the military, see the world. You just don't do it at home. I know it's hard to leave the nest. I know it's hard to leave and go away and leave mommy and daddy and friends and go off and start your own life. But looking back at it, I would not change a thing. And I, my only regret is I wish I would have did it sooner. Like, I'm glad I didn't do Reserve or National Guard because I feel like if I would have done it, I would have been still back at home, falling into the same traps as everybody else that's back at home and not really progressing in life because. I'm still in the mindset of the people that I'm around every single day. I only hang out with my military people one week in a month. So I'm still going to be doing all the same things that the people that back at home are doing. That's why I say a small category of people I think it's good for. But for the majority, go. Go. I'll be mad. Like my soul I have right now, I have one, two, three, four. I have two soldiers and two seamen, two uh, Navy people and two soldiers. They're all 25 and younger. And two to three of them are from this area, this DMV area. And I'm like, no. Like, I hate when my soldiers get stationed back at home. Because it's kind of like it falls into that Reserve National Guard. Because on the weekends and after work, you hang out with those people from back home. You need to, like, leave the nest and get the army life get the army experience k says your videos have been helpful thank you um k kamai cammy okay so it's cammy thank you cammy now i know how to say it next time you're in a live um cammy show me how to say her name 
Army Princess was your nickname? No, that wasn't my nickname. Army Princess was my email address. So when I was when I left basic training and went to AIT, it was my first time having to make an email address. Like I didn't have email before. I didn't need email. I was like in high school. Um, and we didn't have social media and all of that back then where you need email address. So I had to make an email address. It literally popped in the top of my head, like Army Princess. And Army Princess with one end was already taken. So I put another end in there. And 13 years later, Army Princess Collection came. So no, it wasn't my nickname. It was my email address. And I still, to this day, have Army Princess at Yahoo.com. Gas chamber is the worst, but thanks to COVID, we don't have to. Ooh. Y'all lucky because I had to do it twice. Like, you know how I told y'all I got hurt in basic training and I had to restart from the beginning and I had to go through the gas chamber again. It's not fun. Um, <laughs> Trillia said the reserve sucks. This is the first time I'm hearing about this reserve and guard stuff. Most people talk it up like it's the best thing since sliced bread. But Trillian said the reserve. Why does it suck? Like, I really want to know why does it suck? Can you answer that? In the, I really want some of y'all to like dial into this live and be in the live with me. Because when I'm on my Instagram live, I have people that ask to join the live and it'd be so funny. Um, I wish, you know, maybe next week, next time I go live, when I start doing these 25 days of live, I'm going to need for some of y'all to really join in and dial in and talk to me. Because <laughs> I want to know why it suck. <laughs> Um, whole lot. Who said whole lot? SS. Whole lot is difficult to enlist with a pharmacy technician. MOS. No, actually not. I had somebody, excuse me, that just recently um, wrote to me and said that they were already a pharmacy technician before they joined the military and they got to skip um, AIT. And I know that this, I, I've heard that a, a few times, like several times that people said they didn't have to go. Because if you're already certified, like that's basically what AIT does is prep you for national certification. And so if you're already certified, like you already know everything. So if you are a certified pharmacy technician and you join, you don't have to, you can skip AIT. Um, somebody said they want to be a military police. Some more power to you. Make sure y'all go ahead and uh, follow Army Princess Collection, please. Cammy said, same regard, they are a little different, but you still only do stuff once a month. You may be more likely to deploy, though. Okay. I, that's the first time I'm hearing that. Kathleen said, I learned something tonight, so that's how Army Princess came about. Yep, it was my email address that I made in, basic tra in AIT. I didn't know pharmacy technician MOS was hard to get, but, you know, when I joined and I... I um chose an MOS that was like, not a lot of people pick this MOS, you should get it. And I was like, okay, give it to me. That's how I became a pharmacy technician. I wanted medical. And they was like, you should do this one. I was like, okay. I score high enough for it on the ASVAB. Cami says, the only thing about active duty is that I will be going to school too because I'm going to enlist at 18 and it's like I can barely do this distance learning stuff online so it'll be hard to manage. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Cause 90% chance when you, when you go active, you will be doing school online. So that is definitely true. Um, so yeah, if you, I would, that's why I say if you, okay, so we got to order. No, we got to pay out. Shopify paid out. Y'all, we, we going to put the stuff. We, let me know. Nobody said they wanted a, a deal, a discount. So, um, I guess we'll hold the deals till Black Friday. Did you have your degree on active duty and how was it? So I got, I did get my degree in active duty. I'm going to only take a few more questions. We're going to end this live because I think I'm going to do a little bit of the live on my business Instagram. So if y'all want to talk to me over there, we're going to go over there. But I will answer this last question. Yes, I did get my degree on active duty. I got my bachelor's degree in healthcare administration and I did it online. Um, I did it on nights and weekends. I took my clinicals and I took my labs on the weekends because I had to take calculus. I had to take biology and you know, all that is possible. And I did it from overseas. I was in Germany when I got my degree. So, and it's free. 
I don't owe anything to Uncle Sam. That's why I say y'all could do it online, but it will take you longer because I literally took like two classes at a time. So, um, the reserve sucks because everyone is ate up. Nobody can pass the PT test. They lazy and never going to do nothing. It's so boring. I hate it. Trillion, that just took me out. <laughs> but it's the truth. Like, I'm not going to say for everybody, every reserve unit. I can't say that. But that's what I hear. And that's why I tell people, don't go reserve. Don't go guard. Because that literally is what I hear all of the time. He said they ate up. Nobody can pass a PT test because you you're not living and dying army. You're doing it one week in a month. The rest of the the month you you doing nothing. Like nobody's there to make you go to formation to make you go to PT every day. Like you have it's not the same. It's not the same experience, and a lot of people don't like it because they feel like it's like part time army, but not the real army. Um. All right, y'all. On my way to earn a degree in pharmacy technician, I'm about a year out of graduate because I already have a bachelor's. Hope to enlist once I finish. I didn't know that way I would skip AIT. Yes, SS. Also for lab tech or dentistry or even medical tech. I'm not sure about the other ones. All I can speak for is pharmacy. But I'm pretty sure like it, it kind of would be the same, but I'm not 100% sure, so I can't speak on it. You have to speak to a recruiter. I definitely tell y'all to go speak to a recruiter. I appreciate the last of y'all in this live. I really do. I have fun on this live tonight. It was a little more structured, and I'm going to come again. I'm going to come on live again on Thursday, on Thanksgiving. I'll be back on live on Thanksgiving, and I'm going to do a live Thursday, Friday, and Saturday is going to be my a super live with a panel of military people. So make sure y'all in that live. I'm going to go ahead and end this one here. I'm going to jump on, on my business Instagram. So make sure you go over there and follow me over there. And until next time, I will see y'all in the next one. Bye. Thank y'all for the green hearts.